Hi, I'm Duncan Wright from Taplow, Ireland, and this is a short presentation on our range of pneumatic control systems for our air operated diaphragm pump. Firstly, we'll have a look at the pump here, which is a small plexiglass Taplow TR20 pump. Now, when we turn the pump on, it's going to pump out from this bottom tank here through the pump and into the top tank. So you can see the pump, uh, you can see the pump operating, the non-return valves opening and closing, and the diaphragm is moving backwards and forwards. One thing worth pointing out is that all top flow diaphragms are one-piece composite diaphragms. Um, in this case it has a PTFE face on it, but it gives you a nice smooth finish, which makes it very easy to clean and to keep the pump clean during operations. Also, because there are no joints or caps on the front of it, there is no potential for a leak back through to the uh, air side of the pump. We always recommend for controlling the speed of the pump, we always recommend using a pressure regulator to control the air pressure to it, and also a needle valve to control the speed of the pump. You can see here we have the pressure for the pump set just around 5 bar, and the pump is running nice and slowly. By opening up the needle valve, we can increase the speed and the intensity of the pump. And by closing the, closing the needle valve, again, we can slow the pump down and have a, have a nice uh, slow speed if we need it. As with all diaphragm pumps, you'll notice we have a, a, a pulse discharge. Um, you can see that here on the discharge nozzle in the top tank and also on the pressure gauge here. This pressure gauge is measuring the discharge pressure coming through this nozzle. So you can, you can visually you can see the pulses and you can also see it registering on the pressure gauge. Now if we want to eliminate those pulses, we use a pulsation damper, which again is a fully pneumatic device. And by bringing this, opening this valve and bringing the damper online, you can see visually the pulse and the discharge nozzle on the top has disappeared. Also on the pressure gauge you can see the spikes have completely gone from it. So if I close the valve and isolate the damper, you will see our pulsation comes back. And if I close, open up the valve and put the damper back on line, our pulse disappears. And this is the same even if we have the pump running quicker. You can see that the pulsation damper on, we have a nice smooth flow. The damper off, we have our pulsation back in it. The next system I'm going to show you is our batcher. The batcher is very useful if you have to pump predetermined volumes. So let's say you needed to fill 10 containers with. 10 litres in each one. What we do is because we know the pump volume per stroke, we just simply work out the number of strokes that we need to do. So let's say this pump does half a litre. We want 10 litres, so we put in 20 strokes on our bottom counter here, and we simply activate the pump. The batcher now counts out the number of strokes the pump performs, and once it reaches 20, it shuts it off. And you can see the liquid level that we have in the um, in the top tank. Now I'm going to use a little bit of tape, and I'm just going to mark the top of that liquid level. So you can see that's approximately where it is. So if I drain the tank and repeat the process, you'll see that the batcher will give us the exact same amount again. So we just turn the batcher on. And there we have the same level in the, in the top tank. The next system I'm going to show you is our level control unit. Right here the unit is programmed to fill the top tank here up to the, until it reaches our high level sensor. Once the liquid level reaches our high level sensor, the pressure change in the tube will be picked up by our level control unit and it'll shut the pump off. It's also programmed here to drain top tank until it exposes our low level probe and once our low level probe is exposed the pump will come back on and refill it up to the high level. 
So this system is very useful for maintaining levels in production tanks and production vessels or also on bund emptying applications where you want the pump to come on and go off automatically. So you see it will rise up now until it reaches the high level sensor and then it will pump will turn off and it will empty again. The next unit I'm going to show you is our Guardian unit. Now the Guardian can be, can be used to perform a number of different functions. One of them is, is dry run protection, another is deadhead protection, and the third is for barrier monitoring on a, um, on a barrier pump. Now the, the one we have set up here today is for dry run protection. So here what the Guardian is doing is it's piped into the discharge line of the pump and it's monitoring the discharge pressure. So you can see here I've set the discharge pressure for the Guardian to, to react at as 20 psi. So now when I turn the, when I prime the pump by pressing in the button and holding it, the pump will run now until it starts to dry run. So here you will see the pump start to dry run, you'll see bubbles coming through the suction pipe and up through the pump, the discharge pressure falls away, drops below 20 psi, and the Guardian unit trips the pump out. This is very useful, in particular on, on, on applications like bund emptying, where normally an operator would come along, turn the pump on, and walk off, um, coming back later that day, or, or maybe the next day, to turn it off again afterwards. So, in, in this case, all we need to do to reset the pump is allow the pump to prime again by pressing in the reset button, hold it for a couple of moments, let the pump reprime, and the pump now will continue to run until it starts to, starts to run dry again. And the guardian will pick that up, pick up that fall pressure, and shut the pump down. Another very useful application for the guardian is on barrier pumps. Normally, on your standard diaphragm pump you have two diaphragms, one on the left side and one on the right side. If either of those diaphragms fail, the product then gets pushed from the liquid side through the failed diaphragm onto the air side of the pump and gets exhausted as a spray or a leak out of the exhaust muffler. With a barrier pump, we have a second set of diaphragms. So we have our primary diaphragms on either side and then we have our backup diaphragms in, sitting in behind those with a spacer sleeve in between the two. Now what happens if we have a failure of a primary diaphragm? The product only gets as far as the backup diaphragm and then it is contained. Now the pump would normally continue to run in this situation until we had a failure of the backup diaphragm. So what we do to monitor the condition of the diaphragms is we use our guardian unit. And here the guardian unit is connected into the void spaces between the primary and the backup diaphragms via this stainless steel pipework. We can set the pressure we want the Guardian unit to trip at. So we, we, we put a pressure gauge onto the side of the Guardian, set our, our reaction pressure and leave the pump alone. If we have a failure on the, of the primary diaphragm or the air diaphragm for that matter, the pressure will increase in that void. The pressure will thus increase into the, going into the Guardian unit. The Guardian will see that and shut the pump down. So this is a very safe way of containing a, uh, containing a spillage or containing the potential for a spillage should one occur. So these are a few of our, our systems. If you would like to see any more or would like any more information on anything that I've shown you today, um, just please give us a call. The numbers and email addresses will come up at the end of this clip. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.